The problem with being in port for as long as we have been, with storm after storm after storm for about the last month or six weeks or whatever it's been, is we just let things pile up on the boat. We wanted to take the boat out today. It's a bit grey and it's misty, you can't really see. So we thought, well, we want to take the boat out. And then we looked at the state of the boat and we thought, oh my Lord. So now we're tidying the boat up. And as we're tidying the boat up, we're finding all the things we bought to replenish our spares. And we haven't done a thing with them. We've just bunged them to the side and, and not done a thing. Part of that's because Gaynor has been working, doing little jobs. Part of it is because I've been running around doing things for family and things like that because of the pandemic. But we just haven't had the time. So what we decided to do instead is we're going to tidy the boat up and get her into seaworthy condition. And then we're going to move her and put some diesel in. Uh, but while we're at it, we're also going through all our spares lists. And we're just going to look at all the stuff we've got while we're putting it away and remind ourselves what we actually have to do because we've more or less forgotten. But first things first, we can't move the boat because if we do, <laughs> the boat's a disaster so we can't move down here. We've just been too lazy tidying up and we need to sort it out. The dinghy's a disaster zone. You want to see the dinghy. We haven't inflated the dinghy in two months. It is well down. So one of the jobs we have to do is inflate the dinghy so it doesn't fall off the boat because it is so underinflated at the minute it could just fall out of the harness. <sighs> We've just been too lazy and we need our butts kicked so it's time to get things sorted out and that's today's task. Poor old sausage. Oh it's completely a mess because it's so bad. <laughs> I think this is the <laughs> most deflated she's ever been for any just poor thing. Well, there's salty sausage getting blown up. <laughs> An absolute essential task every now and then. So, Bevy, tell me about one of the spares that we keep on board. Um, we've got these things. Um, I'll just take one out. No, I'll take them all out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what they are is LEDs. And we get them in packs of six from made in China and um, we uh, use them for our uh, overhead lights. Now the problem is that uh, being on a boat these things have got solid circuits in them which means solid copper connections. They fatigue, they get voltage surges, um, they're cheaply made so they're not particularly quality components so they wear out reasonably. We've had this one up here about two years and it's finally started to blink about three or four of these LEDs no longer light but the problem is that before they stop lighting they flicker like mad and drive you crazy. So that one's going and a new one is going in to uh, replace it. Snap them off they just like tablets. The only issue you really have is that these the leads are a little bit too long and just require a little bit of clipping back with a pair of nippers. Not very, just by a couple of mils, that's all they need. So it's going to be like that. So the only job now is to put it back in, which is the tricky bit. <laughs> you little light, there it goes up there. So these, quite literally, just slot into the little holes. Just there, give it a little push, and we should be good. Yay! So now what I've got to do is put back the glass protector and the little plastic ring which has a, a little break in it. And uh, so that goes up there, and that goes up there, and it only fits in one way around, so you can't get it wrong. Job done. Well, Bevy and I are uh, doing a boat tidy and um, I found a really essential tool that you need is a knife. This is one of our knives that we have in our sailing jackets. Um, you know, it's so useful to have something that you can cut ropes um, and just do a variety of bits and bobs. And we have used this in so many different ways. So having a knife that is in your jacket or easy to access is just an absolute must. Yeah, because we've got another large knife, haven't we? Yeah, I'm going to be um, redesigning uh, around here. And I've also got a knife which I just hang um at the moment so i want to do something a bit better with that that's just a straight blade that one isn't it that's just a straight blade but i have it hanging 
-huh. And um, even though Beverly's put gold, cold galvanic spray on it, it's starting to rust. So um, she needs to sharpen it again. But we have at least something that just hangs there. So we always know where to find a knife. Um, and then we have these which we put in our um, sailing jackets. But the problem is... Um, when we're going from say the sailing jackets to the mullions or other things or we're going out shopping and we're using those sailing jackets we always take the knives out when we're going out just <laughs> just to be on the safe side last thing we need is pc plod feeling our collars for having a knife in our pocket exactly so we always take them out so that's why uh, i had this one on the chart table and now i've got to find the jacket that it goes in Camera is rolling. So we're at the fuel dock and um, one of the things we have to do is add fuel set to our diesel. Um, what it does is it kills diesel bug. Now there's two kinds. There's uh, Marine 16 and things like it which kill the bug. And there is things like fuel set which are dispersants. And what they do is the water that the bug lives on, they disperse it through the diesel and they also disrupt the bug and gradually dissolve it, cleaning your tank, cleaning your lines and cleaning your filters. Or at least that's what they claim. Uh, I have to say the only time we stopped using fuel set we had jelly in the filters and when we started using fuel set the filters cleaned up again and the last time we cleaned our we changed our filters over they were so clean on the inside we seriously considered putting them back and then what we actually did was keep them spares they were so clean it was on it was uncanny i've never seen anything like it so we are truly converted we are firm believers in adding fuel set to our diesel keeps the diesel clean, keeps the bug out, keeps the engine clean. It just seems to work well and I ain't skipping it. The other little task we've got to do here today is to pump out the sewage tank. And one of the things we'll do when that's pumped out is I'll put my hand over the air hole that vents the tank and open the seacock and we will suck seawater in through and clean all the lines so that any sludge sitting in the bottom of the line will be cleaned out and go into the thing. It also helps clean the pump so the marina staff are happy with that. Ooh. That. Oh yeah, the fun of boat life. Absolutely. 
Ja, dat is een feestje, we hebben hem gewoon met de glasses aan. Haha, we kunnen wel wat doen. Alright, ignoring the roar of the kettle in the background, a bit of a cup of tea. Yeah, one of the things that's really useful to have on a boat is a tape box. Now, we have got in here all sorts of tapes. We have got retro tape. Oh, keep that out. Keep the retro tape out. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, retro. Okay. Retro tape. Tip off. Uh, PTFE tape. Um, cloth masking tape. Masking tape. Uh, sorry, not. This is cloth tape. Masking tape. Look and my favourite tape of all, which is amalgamating tape. This is a tape I didn't even knew existed before I had a boat. But this is a great tape. Um, and um, this is the tape I need to fix our a spare AIS aerial. Well, it's not really. It's it's used for our AIS. But it can also be a spare radio aerial. But it can also be a spare radio aerial so that when we actually bought it, we bought it so that it could do two jobs. Um, and um, it needs a tiny fix, and that's why I need the amalgamating tape. When it comes to boats, I cannot tell you how important it is to have lots of different lines. Bebe and I have um, uh, these uh, throwing lines, uh, which are great for throwing um, and um, getting the boat in. We have mooring lines. On top of that, we have what we call our dog ropes, which are used for any kind of job that we need to lash up stuff. But having plenty of lines is absolutely essential. It's amazing what you can do with them. It does make life a lot easier. It does. Um, as I say, we've got these mooring lines. I have a, a line which I only use for docking. You know, it just makes my life easier and simpler. And what's wrong with that? Um, if you're ever going to have uh, guests aboard, then having spare life jackets is really important. Even if you just have a dinghy vest, you know, you've got something uh, for people uh, to move about the boat with and uh, you can go out in. But um, we have used our dinghy vest on one occasion when one of our life jackets went off. <laughs> so... Uh, but as I say, we've got our old life jackets are now our spares and just like anything else, we maintain them on a regular basis and the biggest thing that we find is the gas canister. We need to make sure that that is screwed in um, and we check that. Apparently loose gas canisters are the biggest cause of life jackets failing. Exactly. So... Um, you know, that is really, really important. And if you're not but, sure how to service it, ticket your RNLI station and they'll show you. Yeah. Um, we had uh, a guy on board for about two hours and, um, you know, one of the things he taught us was how to service our life jacket. And if you think about it, it's such an important piece of equipment. But if you can have a spare, then brilliant. That's a good thing to have. It's getting dark outside these days. Oh, it's 
I mean, it's only what four in the afternoon. It's four in the afternoon. It's pitch black. But well, not quite. I can see a wee tiny bit of dark grey blue out the window. Yeah, it's just. But to those of you in warmer climes, this is four p.m. Yeah. In Northern Ireland. 